Hey guys, Christy here from DeSilva Life and welcome back to our channel. So if you are new around here, let me just give you a brief intro to DeSilva Life and what I am so passionate about. So at DeSilva Life, we help people set up systems to organize, automate, streamline, and scale and grow their business, all the things, yes systems are so crucial. Well, we really specialize in setting up and helping you with ClickUp and HoneyBook. There are other productivity and time management tips that we really, really want to nail down into Silva Life and that we're super passionate about. One of these is Inbox Zero. So if you, you might've heard this term, you might know what it is already, or you might not. So let me tell you what Inbox Zero is. Inbox Zero is the goal of literally looking at your primary inbox and having zero emails. I know that sounds crazy, but it's actually something that we achieve here at Silva Life at least on a weekly basis. We actually waste so so much time clicking around our inbox, rereading a million emails that we know we have to take care of, but we just don't, or we are waiting on something. So having a cleared inbox and having these stored away in labels or click up tasks are really where the magic happens because you know it's safe and sound. You didn't delete it or archive it and it's in cyberspace, but you're actually gonna come back to it later and take care of it without having to stare at it every single day. So. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to reach inbox zero with Gmail. Now you can use this on all the other different platforms, but I'll do it specifically with Gmail. If you want to keep watching and you don't use Gmail, you'll still be able to get the idea of the process of how to do inbox zero, how to set up your inbox in a specific and organized way and how to follow this process on a daily and weekly basis. So let's dive in. Are you ready to change your life with Inbox Zero? So what is Inbox Zero? It is the goal of getting your primary inbox down to zero emails. And now sometimes this isn't achievable for everyone, you know, every single day, but at least once a week, I believe that it is possible for you with the tips that I'm about to show you. So here you can see I have 747 emails in my primary inbox. I'm gonna show you some tips on number one, how to declutter them right away, and then how to keep an organizational system to make sure you are maintaining your inbox. Okay, so the first thing is, first things first here. What we wanna do is we wanna actually separate out our inbox into different categories. So how you're gonna do that is go into the settings, click see all settings, and then this is in Gmail, but you also will have this in other email providers as well. So just go into your settings, look on if there are different categories for inboxes, and then you could do the same thing um, with what I'm gonna show you with labels. It may just be different names like folders or things like that. So just wanna mention that as well. So then you're going to click into inbox and you see these categories here. So you have primary promotion, social updates, and forums. And if you click through them, you'll see the different things and examples of what emails would fall under this category. So promotion, social updates, etc. I typically in my inboxes have primary social and updates. Forums is like messages from online groups, discussion boards, mailing lists. Feel free to put that one on there as well. I just choose to have these four. So when you do that and you click save changes, look at that already. I literally went from 750 emails down to two. So now let's see what did filter into those different inboxes. You'll see updates. I have um, Instagram analytics, Google analytics, um, ClickUp notifications, um, different like spam type things or like new logins, right? This is just gonna be that. Now, what I suggest is coming in every single day and taking a look through your updates, social, and promotions, and either looking and skimming through them, right, because a lot of them won't need a response or anything, and then you can select all and either delete or mark as read. Now, let's talk about the difference between those. If you delete them, then they're gonna be in your trash, but if you mark them as read, if you ever want to search these things again, then you'll have 
them all there. But a note here as well, if you don't delete them, then you'll see here, it will take up storage within your Google account. So something to take note of. Also something you can think about as well is maybe you want to keep them for like six months or a year and then you can go back and you know delete all of your updates emails. Social in here currently that's empty. Promotions, we have Grammarly, HoneyBook, uh, different stuff like that. Okay, so that is filtering out your categories of your inbox. Now I also wanna do say one more thing about this as well. Sometimes I'll come in here and I'll be like, oh, okay, I actually wanna take care of this email, right? So maybe I see Instagram insights and I'm like, I want to actually look through this with the marketing team and see you know, why we had fewer accounts engaged, et cetera. So you can either take this and drag it into primary. Now a thing about this as well, this is gonna be a quick filter that says, okay, you moved this to primary. Now for future messages from this specific provider, do you want this to go into primary, yes or no? And then you can decide, no, this is just a one-time thing, or yes, I actually do want them to stay in there. So if I move this back, um, I can move this back into here and then I'll say, yes, I actually wanna keep that in updates, right? But another thing you can do, this is how I set up mine, is if you go into settings and then you go back into the inbox tab, I have this include starred in primary. So that way if I go into my inbox, I see this email in here and I say, oh, actually I wanna put this in my primary inbox. I just go ahead and star it and then it's gonna show up in here. So I say, okay, this is something I want to take care of. After I take care of it, I can go ahead and archive this and then it'll be done, right? So it won't actually move the conversations into primary in the future. It was just something I wanted to take care of now. Okay, so that is the inboxes here. Now let's talk about labels. So labels are essentially like folders that you can store different emails into, right? So you can see some of these, this is our support inbox. You can see the different labels that we have set in here. Collaborations, designer submissions, while well, we were looking for a designer, inquiries, partnerships, read later, to sell the life, support responded to, system school, and system school we also have like um, different things, categories in there as well. And so we also color code these. So let's add a new label to show you how this goes. Um, so let me add a client's label and create. Now this is gonna show up at the top. It's just going to be in alphabetical order. And then I can also add a new one, either um, add a sub-label under it, or I can click add, and let's say this is um, strategy session clients, right? Then I can either have this on the side or nest label it under clients and click create. Now I want to color code this, so you can go in here and you can label the color. Let's do this one uh, like purple. And you can only label clients or label clients and its sub-labels. I typically have them, the label and the sub-label as the same color, but you can always go into that sub-label and change the color of it itself. Okay, so now how do you actually apply these labels? So if I come into here, you'll see, okay, this was something that someone asked a question about. Now, once I go ahead and take care of this email, that's when I'm gonna go ahead, apply the label and archive it. So if I go ahead and say move to, and then put this in clients, it's then going to go ahead, apply the label and archive it. So when I come back into here, you'll see this is in here and then I can see, okay, it has the client's label. If this person now responds, it's gonna come back into my primary inbox and you're gonna see that client's label on here. Another thing I wanted to mention is you can actually apply more than one label. So if I come into this label option, then I can say, okay, what if I also want to mark this as collaborations? Well, now this is in clients, it's also in collaborations. So if you're in the inbox as well, and let's go ahead and move this to inbox, 
You're gonna see this shows clients and collaborations, and if you didn't wanna go ahead and archive it at the same time, you can just apply the label. Now, what happens if you say, okay, this now has multiple labels, but it's showing up in my labels, but I want it now archived. This is a common question we get as well. Well, you can actually click into the email and go ahead and just click that archive button, and then it's gone. Same thing this, with this one. If I clicked into here and I press archive, it's then going to show up in that archive space, right? Okay, so that is actually applying the labels. Now let's move on to actually setting up filters, right? So maybe after you do these labels, you say, okay, an email comes in and I always want it to apply this label and start it and put it in this specific inbox category, etc. So how you're gonna do that, like this example here, right? Read later, just sell the life. So I have a read later label um, for, you know, maybe newsletters that I wanna read at another point, or sometimes I have like a few of my favorite newsletters and I have a label for that specific newsletter under here, right? So say that was to sell the life's newsletter. So what you can do in here is actually click into that email and then click more and then filter messages like these. So this is gonna take anything from that specific sender, but you can even get a little more granular and say the subject is this, or it has the words this, doesn't have size, etc. So for example, for this instance, um, we just recently started using Calendly for our strategy sessions. Now, those were filtering in into our updates category, so I wanted to make sure that they always go into primary, star it, and label it strategy sessions. So I'm gonna show you those next, but what I had to do is I said it has to have the words, and I believe with Calendly it was like new scheduled session, because I also had some like promotional emails from Calendly and other things that weren't necessarily strategy sessions. So sometimes you have to get a little bit more granular to make sure it's actually pulling in the exact email that you want. Okay, so once you do say, okay, now you can search and see what it does pull up, right? Then you can say, okay, this is going to be from Christy at DeSilva Life. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a filter. And here are the different things you can do. You can skip the inbox and archive it automatically. You can mark it as red, you can star it so it's showing up in your primary if you have that setting on. You can apply the specific label that you want. Add a forwarding address, delete it, never send it to spam, send it, send a template and then choose the template. Always mark it as important, never mark it. Categorize as primary social updates, forums, promotions. And then this last button here too. So if you decide, okay, I wanna add this label, I wanna star it, etc. Do you wanna just do this moving forward or do you wanna do this to all the previous emails as well? So all the previous newsletters or customer service emails that you've gotten, then you would click this apply, also apply filter to matching conversations and then you can create that filter. Now once you create that, you can go into your settings again and see the filters that you have created um, and then edit them or delete them for from there as well. So then once those things happening, you're starting to get a system that's automating your inbox and making it a little easier, right? So every time something comes in with a label, say it's these newsletters, I'm able to quickly open this up and say, do I wanna read this now or later? Let's say later, okay, let me go ahead and archive it. So it's making those steps a little bit easier and more consistent. So that is filtering and then like again before I showed you the easy drag and drop of filters um, to make sure that things are showing up in the specific inbox and category that you want them to go through. Now I just want to show you a couple more things that you can do to make sure you are keeping the clutter out of your inbox. One extra bonus tip I want to show you though is if you didn't notice on one of those emails that was the test email, it had an auto responder. So this is just a really great tip for setting boundaries for yourself in your inbox. In our support inbox, which is this, we have an autoresponder, and how you set that is you go into settings and click see all settings and then scroll down on this general tab. So you can see our autoresponder. 
says, hold on. It says, hi there, thank you for your message. You can expect to hear back from us in the next 48 business hours. If anything's urgent, reply with the subject line urgent, etc." And you can absolutely take this template to use for yours as well because what this is doing is it's setting expectations, right? If we get an email late on a Friday or during the weekend or you know while we may be out of office for a day, this gives realistic expectations to say, hey, we're gonna get to your email as soon as we can, but you can expect to hear back from us etc. So they're not waiting for your reply, right? We of course check our, our support inbox at least twice a day in the morning and evening, but just in case there is that chance that we can't get to that message right away, this sets up realistic expectations. Okay, so I wanted to share that as well. Now let's talk about another tip for maintaining inbox zero and really creating a system to declutter. We signed up for a million different newsletters, right? Whether we were interested in that topic or just wanted the free download. Now, a really great way to get rid of this digital clutter and unsubscribe is if you go ahead and Google mass unsubscribe from emails, then you can see these different providers, right? You could see unroll.me, clean.email, and click on these different services. What this is going to do is it's going to integrate and connect to your email provider, and then it's going to be able to show you all of the newsletters you subscribe to, and then with a click of a button, you could just say unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. So you can choose which one you like best, but this is a really great way to declutter and say, you know what, I'm not reading these, I don't need them, so let's just unsubscribe from them. But you know, by doing this and having your categories separated out, you're also gonna be seeing what you're actually opening and reading and using versus not. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is actually if you are a ClickUp user. So ClickUp is a project management tool if you don't know what it is, and this is where we are basically have all of our digital to-do lists for DeSilva Life. So whether it's one-off tasks or we're managing projects, social media, et cetera, basically we have everything in there and then everyone has their calendar and says, okay, what am I working on this day, week, month, et cetera. But a really cool feature they have is the Chrome extension. And let me show you how we use this with our Gmail. Okay, so here I am in this newsletter, right? And say this was an email from a client or a newsletter I wanted to read or anything that needed a response. You can go ahead and click this little bubble here and then you can actually attach this whole entire email to a new task or to an existing task. So if you click new task, you can then create a task for yourself to say, answer client or research X or cancel subscription, right? And then you can say, am I doing this or is a team member doing this? Now, if you do assign this to a team member, they don't actually need access to your inbox as well. They can see the entire email, which you'll see in a second, which is great because then they'll have the information that they need. Assign a due date and decide what list this task is going into. So once you click create new task, you're gonna see this little, um, button pop up here and you can click this and it's going to bring you to that exact task. So you'll see now I'm in the task. If I click on this attachment, I can see the entire email and I can even open this back up in Gmail when I'm ready to tackle this. But this is now assigned to me with a due date. It's in the list that it belongs to, right? Respond to client about X and you're taking care of those emails. So after I assign this, I then go ahead and archive this email or put a label on it and archive it into the label it belongs in. So again, it's saying, okay, I'm gonna take care of this email, but I'm gonna do it or a team member's gonna do it on X date. And you know that you can you know, take it out of your mind. So with that, let's just wrap it all up in a big bow and talk about the things that we talked about and how you can realistically maintain inbox zero. So first doing that original decluttering, you're gonna want to separate out your inboxes. You're going to want to maybe use a mass unsubscribe service to get rid of any email newsletters moving forward that you're not utilizing. 
And then you're gonna to wanna to set up your labels to get started knowing the categories that you know, you want to start with section sectioning and organizing your inbox into. Now you can, don't think about this for too long and too hard, just set up the initial ones and then you can always add them as you are going on. If you have an email that you say, I want to save, but I don't have a category for it, then that's when you're going to want to add a new label. So different um, inboxes, add your labels. You can start creating filters or start creating them after you've reached inbox zero and then say, okay, are there specific emails that I want to start filtering? And then every single day, you're just going to come into your primary, tackle what has to get tack tackled, add a label and archive it away. I typically will have only a handful, like literally three to five emails in my primary inbox a day if I know I'm gonna take care of them that day or the next say like 48 hours. At least once a week, I try to achieve inbox zero. It's a really great achievement and totally gets rid of the mental clutter. And then besides your primary inbox, make sure you're just popping into promotion, promotion social and updates. Is there anything that you wanna star and show up in your primary to take care of or read? Or can you either delete or mark all of these as read? So that is it. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you in achieving inbox zero. So it's not too bad, right? It doesn't seem impossible. It's definitely gonna be a process to be able to declutter your inbox. But once that huge hurdle is done, it's just the process of maintaining it. I totally believe in you. You can absolutely do it. So if you're interested in the other free resources we have, go ahead and check out the videos on our channel. If you're just diving into systems in your business, we have so many free resources for you to download at desilvalife.com slash freebies. But we're super passionate about systems, organization, time management, and productivity. So we're going to have other channels coming down the pipeline that have to deal with time blocking, digital clutter, all the things. So again, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of those that you may be interested in watching. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you succeed in your inbox zero journey. It really will change your business and your life.